so the first part of Unit 4 Biology uh, is about ecology, sort of the first half of the unit. Um, and the first part of ecology is populations and ecosystems. Um, and this is mostly about learning definitions. Uh, so the stuff in red, um, these are the definitions that you have to learn. Uh, you should sort of take notes and learn them word for word uh, because you can get asked to define the words in exam questions and they're quite specific uh, for what they give marks for. Um, and the stuff in purple uh, is, is stuff that isn't on the specification but uh, at the end of Unit 5, um, I'll do some videos on this later, but at the end of Unit 5 you get a synoptic essay and you can get marks in that for talking about stuff that's not on the spec but is related to uh, the, the essay topic. Um, so it's worth noting this stuff down. Um, I keep separate notes for stuff that's not on the spec and you can sort of look at it later when you get to uh, working on the essay. Um, so first thing to define is biotic and abiotic factors. Um, biotic conditions are living conditions in an ecosystem. So these are related to the, 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 the species living in an area um, such as food because all animals eat either plants or other animals um, and so the food available depends on the, the species living there um, and also competition because species compete with each other and the species that they have to compete with sort of determines what adaptations they need to survive and predation which is uh, predators um, so species need to be adapted to avoid or survive predators um, and we'll go into these two here uh, in, in a later video but what you need to know is that the biotic conditions are the the living conditions or components uh, of an ecosystem and that is what you would write if you got asked in an exam uh, but you should always give an example uh, because there's usually a mark or if there's a one mark question then you need to give an example for the one mark um, and abiotic conditions are conditions that are not related to uh, things that are alive so these are things like temperature, uh, climate, um, water, uh, and for plants there are things like soil pH, carbon dioxide, um, weather, and light availability. Um, and same again, if you get asked to define abiotic conditions, uh, you need to give an example. Um, and you should know from GCSE or uh, Unit 2 that all species have adaptations to their environment. Um, and an adaptation is just something which, it's, it's a characteristic which makes a species more likely to survive and reproduce. So it gives an advantage depending on the conditions. Um, an example would be uh, arctic and desert foxes so an arctic fox has to be adapted to uh, cold environments so they will have small ears uh, to minimize the surface area so there is less heat loss 
um, and a desert fox would have large ears to maximize heat loss. And those adaptations, uh, they, they make the species more likely to survive and reproduce uh, because an arctic fox, um, they've got small ears, so they lose less heat, so they need to spend less energy on staying warm. A uh, desert fox has big ears, um, so they lose more heat, so they need to uh, spend less energy staying cool. Um, so those are adaptations. Um, a population is um, a group a group of organisms of one species well an interbreeding group group of organisms of one species living in an area so they have to be in the breeding because well for example uh, if you have a, a woodland um, you'll have owls and you have one population of owls across the whole woodland uh, because those owls are sort of they can all interact with each other um, and they can all breed with each other so you have a population of owls uh, but if you've got a population of wood lice in that woodland uh, they might live under a log but they will be separate populations because if you've got two logs with wood lice living under each they can't breed with each other um, and they can't really interact with each other because they're far apart so they will be considered two separate populations so you just sort of have to keep in mind that uh, populations it, it can be sort of hard to define what one population is because the, 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 the sort of the boundaries depend on whether they can interact with each other or not uh, but this is this is all the population is um, so it's not really hard you just need to remember this definition and a community is all of the Populations living in an area. So, in an oak woodland, we would have a population of owls, we would have lots of populations of wood lice, um, we would have foxes, population of foxes, and a population of oak trees, and other other populations as well. But all of these populations would make up one community. So a community is all of the populations living in an area or an ecosystem. Um, and a habitat is the area where a population or a community lives. The area or a place um, and you can have different habitats in an ecosystem. So in an oak woodland um, wood lice again, wood lice would live in or under logs and that is their habitat that is where they live um, and owls they would live I think owls live in trees so that's their habitat um, and foxes live in burrows underground I think so the habitat of the population is just where it lives Um, an ecosystem. Well, this is this is sort of a bit of a harder definition. Uh, an ecosystem is 
a self-contained functional unit in which all organisms or in which a community interacts with a physical environment. Uh, so what this means is um, an ecosystem for example would be an oak woodland. That is the ecosystem. And the ecosystem is made up of all of the habitats and the, the whole community and all of the biotic and abiotic factors. Um, another ecosystem would be a beach, uh, and that would have habitats, um, I suppose, long grass, that would be a habitat for uh, whatever lives in long grass, and sand would be a habitat for crabs, um, and the water would be a habitat for fish, and that would make up an ecosystem. <coughs> but you would also have the abiotic factors of the beach, which you would say it is dry, uh, it is humid, um, no, it's not humid. Uh, it's dry. It is probably hot uh, and sandy um, and windy as well. So that's an ecosystem. And a niche is just defined as the role of a species, the unique role of a species in the environment or ecosystem. Um, so what this means is that every species is adapted to survive in a certain set of, of conditions. So for example, um, a frog is adapted to survive in water in, in sort of boggy areas um, it is predated upon by well it predates upon flies that's what it eats um, and it's predated upon uh, probably some sort of bird yeah I think birds eat frogs um, and it competes with uh, I don't really know what frogs compete with but sort of the idea is that a niche is all of the abiotic and biotic interactions of a species. So the niche of a frog also includes um, sort of the conditions where it lives. So frogs live in sort of humid places. Um, for example, you get frogs living in rainforests and it can also include it can also include how a species interacts with its environment for example um, two species might they might appear to have the same niche they might be eaten by the same predators they might compete with the same species they might live in the same type of environment but if if those two species if one comes out in the morning and one comes out in at night then those are two separate niches because the, the behaviour of a species is also part of its niche. Um, for example, niches can be really specialised. Um, for example, there is a type of fish called a, a chichlid. And in a lake in Africa, um, there are there are above 500 species of chichlid. Um, and they're all slightly different. Some of them will eat uh, frogs. Another one. Some of them will eat snails. Some of them will eat uh, plankton. Some of them will eat parasites off of other fish. Um, and in a different lake, there are chichlids that are so specialised that one chichlid will eat, one species of chichlid will eat the scales off of the right side of a fish and the other will eat the scales off the left side of a fish. Two different species. Um, so they sort of coexist. 
and the same thing they have almost the same niche except that small difference in behavior so a good question is can two species have the same niche um, and no they can't because when two species have the same niche they're going to compete with each other because if they're going to eat the same food if they're going to live in the same environment then they're going to compete for all of the same resources and one species will have to out compete the other because one is going to be better adapted in some way or one will evolve to be better adapted and when that happens they can out compete the other the other species that's at a disadvantage is not going to be able to reproduce and survive and the population is going to get smaller and smaller until it becomes extinct and an example is red versus grey squirrels so originally red squirrels were in the UK and they sort of occupied a niche exclusively they had their own niche um, and they, had, they were a large population uh, but then grey squirrels were introduced from uh, North America and they were brought over to the UK from America and they were introduced into the environment and these two sort of have the same niche um, they, they, they eat the same food and they live in the same environment uh, but the difference is that the grey squirrel outcompetes the red squirrel uh, in the, the sort of woodland they'll have in the UK uh, the, the grey squirrel is better adapted to it so um, red squirrel populations are declining because they're being outcompeted by the newly introduced grey squirrels which occupy the same niche and eventually if people did not intervene then red squirrels should become extinct because they can't reproduce enough uh, so the population is declining because they can't compete for the resources because the grey squirrels are just better at it um, and there are conservation efforts which we'll probably look at in a later video to uh, preserve red squirrels so they probably won't go extinct but there is a danger of it um, so that's sort of an example of what can happen when two species occupy the same niche um, one species will eventually be outcompeted and go extinct uh, so that's about all for this first video um, you just need to learn the definitions um, I will try and probably make some flashcards for the definitions uh, which you could use um, but I would recommend just, just writing them all down uh, stick them up on your wall or something look at them every so often and just learn them all word for word and be able to write them um, next video is probably going to be on investigating populations which I think is quite a boring thing but have to do it um, and I would recommend just doing past paper questions that's sort of the most important thing in unit 4 or sort of in all of biology it's, it's as important to know how to answer the questions as it is to know the content uh, because a lot of questions are data questions uh, but we will probably look at questions later after we've done sort of more ecology but that's about it so if, if I've made any, any mistakes which can happen uh, just leave a comment and I'll work on fixing it um, and if you have any questions uh, also leave a comment and I will try to answer it um, and you could subscribe uh, because I will be making some more videos quite soon